Are you looking to try to learn more about your marketing? You're looking to be a more of an impactful marketer. You're looking to be more of a successful marketer. And what we're going to do is we're going to kind of give you a really quick case study of how Grant Cardone markets to a black audience. And the reason why we're illustrating this is because he specifically spoke about it in the interview. So what this is not going to be, this is not going to be an attack video on Grant Cardone. Uh, we're not here to tear him down. We're not here to uh, try to make him look bad. Um, he had an issue with, I think, meet Kevin some time ago. I'm not going to stand in the way of those two guys destroying each other. I'm not going to interfere with that. Right. I'm going to let them have at it. I'm going to get out of the way. But what I think this video can be for people that really start to implement what we're going to talk about is how this particular guy, right, is able to enter into a new market, right, with his offers and market to them successfully because he really kind of understands how to enter that market and how to communicate to that market based on the story that they already have going on inside their head. And I really believe that once you apply this to your marketing, it can put you in a position to be a lot more successful. Uh, Dr. Chaz, what's going on with it, man? I, I'm a, uh, I need to tap back into what you got going on and Eskimoni, what's going on with it. So hopefully y'all can get a lot of value from this. Miss Phoenix 91, what's going on? So that's what we're going to do. So really quickly, we're going to go into this interview that he gave with uh, a member of the Trump family, I want to say maybe a few days, a few weeks ago. And the reason why we're going to really bring this up is because, like I said before, is that he spoke about it. So because he spoke to it specifically, he kind of put the cat out of the bag and we're going to kind of go in depth to it because I want you to kind of understand the principles that he's operating under. And then you can utilize these principles and whatever you have going on from your marketing standpoint. So let's go ahead and get straight into it. Seeing how you did it, you know, it's very tastefully done, but I do think is an inspiration to people and people want to be like you. What, why do you think you had all of the, the follows on all these social media platforms? Well, I, I, I think that I'm not tasteful half the time. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm not. I mean, I look at stuff and I cringe. I'm like, oh my god, I'm sitting on the top. This... Of a, I'm sitting on a Rolls Royce on the on the on the. Oh, well, I haven't seen that one. I'll have to go and, check that one out. And I'm literally throwing money, you know, like. So, so anyway, what, what I'm trying to do though is, you know, that I, that's not going to appeal to you, right? But there's audiences, and I think the reason we have done well there is because it's very raw, it's fast, it's unedited, it's uh, you know, a little bit in your face. I'm telling people the truth. I'm very similar to your father-in-law in some case, in some ways. You yeah. Know? Unscripted. Yeah. I'm going to I'm just going to lay it out the way it is. If you don't like me for it, no problem. Well, he's not upset about showing off the the uh, assets that he has. So, you know, there are some similarities there, too. What do you think would happen, Grant, if I sat on top of a Rolls Royce and was like just throwing the money out? Like, how do you think that would be received? I mean, people would I, I couldn't even imagine the reaction so if I did something like that. Depends on what outfit you wear. So <laughs> obviously it'd have to be in a bikini of some variety. I think that's the only only way to successfully execute that one. Well, um, it's just so interesting that, that that's what people really do enjoy. I think they tune in for that sort of thing, right? There's an audience. There's an audience out there. That's the only way you can stop them because you're competing with all this other stuff, right? Yeah, Instagram. that's true. They, they want to stop and look at it as they're scrolling through. Well, that's all people are doing. They're doing this. If you just watch yourself yeah. move through it, you're just moving. Mm -hmm. through it. So if you don't stop, I never really got your attention. So for us, about half my audience is black under the age of 40. How did, how did a white guy uh, attract an audience? Like if I'm out... If I'm out in public and I see a 55 year old white man or a 25 year old black kid, the black kid knows who I am. There's like wow. there's a there's a better there's a 10 times better chance 10x that that the, the black kid knows me. Now the reason is because we go after that audience and we're talking to them in very um, street terms, if you will, very not big nomenclature vocabularies. Mm -hmm. You know, we just keep everything very tight and simple. And at the same time, we've had you know uh, raised a billion dollars in the last three years over the internet. Uh, from accredited investors. So we've, we're hitting both bands. They're all. Okay. So really want to get there real quick because I don't want to get the stream taken down. Um, so what he spoke about is how, I think he said black children are black people under 40. I think he said that. Um, and he speaks in this particular vernacular. He called it street terms, right? And we're going to kind of go into where he's been able to capture that particular audience and why we think he went after that particular audience um, for his business offers. We know he does a live events. We know he has the courses. We you know he also has the uh, the investment funds and syndication deals, right? And what I want you to take is take away from this, right, is not a disdain for Grant Cardone because first thing you got to understand is that nobody can enter into a market that they're not allowed to enter into, right? Therefore, the market has to be available and open for them to enter into the market for them to do it, right? So that's one of the first things. So like I said before, is that this is not going to be like a Grant Cardone bash fest uh, because I'm going to get out of the way and let him and meet Kevin do what they got to do, right? I'm not going to get in the middle of that. 
And so that's what I want people to really understand. Um, this is not an anti-Grant Cardone video. So the first thing we want to talk about is that Grant understands the market he wants to reach. And he understands the story they're telling themselves. And I think that's really, really important. So if you want to speak to somebody, you need to understand right who they are and what story they're telling themselves. Right? What is the story that they're already telling themselves? Because often if you come at people with a story that they're not telling themselves, in their mind, you're contradicting what I already believe and you're contradicting my decision making. So let me give an example. We had a narrative on YouTube that there was something deficient in black culture. And I said, cool. And then I asked those people, well, where does the culture come from? And nobody could answer the question. Because the way I would have got along with them is to agree with them. The way the way I got into disagreement with them is I said, OK, well, where does the culture come from? Because you're a, a person where your people originate from the continent of Africa and you have. Welsh and German and, you know, uh, Espanol names. Right. You, you're a Calvinist. Where does this come from? This culture that you're saying is so deficient. Well, where does the culture originate from? Were your people doing this five, six hundred years ago? So they couldn't answer none of those questions. So because I couldn't repeat the story back to them in their own head, then it was kind of like a syntax error. So, you know, how you you put a command into a computer and the computer does not have the ability because of its program to execute the command. You get what we call a syntax error. So often when you tell somebody something that's different than the story they already have going on inside their head, whatever that story is, you just got to figure that out. It creates a syntax error inside their brain and then they lose their ability to communicate. If not, they get real mad, they get upset. But for a lot of people, they just shut down because they now don't have the information inside their head. So what you get with a lot of people is that it doesn't matter what you say to them. They just repeat the program that's inside their head. So then how do you reach them? You just figure out what program they're running. Right. Grant understands what story his audience is already telling themselves. The story don't have to be true. It just has he has to know the story. I'm going to repeat myself. The story doesn't have to be true. He just has to figure out what the story is because Grant is an expert salesperson. Right. He's not an amateur salesperson. He's not a rookie sales guy. He's an expert at sales. And he understands I'm going to connect with you on the story that you already are telling yourself inside your head. That's going to be what we're going to connect on. Right. And so then therefore he builds his marketing based around that. Therefore, he understands what there's a segment of the population that thinks that success is these things. Right. These material items, me standing on a Rolls Royce throwing money, that's going to get their attention. If I was driving down the street and I saw an Anglo guy in a Rolls Royce throwing money, I wouldn't it wouldn't even get my attention. I just keep driving down the street. Because that's not the story going on. I don't think to me that doesn't represent success. It's just a guy with a Rolls Royce. It's a million ways to get a car. Right. It's a million ways to get a car. Just because you got a car don't mean you got money just means you got a car. I don't know how you got the car. Therefore, I have a different story. So I'm not his market. And so that's what I want you to understand is that when you're trying to speak to a market, you got to figure out what story they're telling themselves and then just ask yourself, do I want to tell them that same story? You may not want to tell them that story. You may be like, I don't feel like saying, I don't feel like repeating that story to them. Right. That's a decision that you got to make. But every market has a story inside their head. And you just got to try to figure out what story. So Tyler Perry was successful. Why? Because he figured out the story his market was telling themselves. And he just told that story back to them. That wasn't a story he created. That was a story they already had inside their head. Now, it took him 10 years to figure that story out. But once he figured that story out, he had a license to print money. Because he just tells the story back to his audience that they're already telling themselves. He don't tell them a new story. He tells them the same story. Right. And many times what we're trying to do is tell people a new story. That's really going to work. Why? Because what you're doing now is you're making that person feel like they're wrong. And most people don't want to feel like they're wrong. They want to feel like they're right. So what they want you to do is relay what, you know, you got people that believe the earth is flat. Well, it's mathematically impossible for the earth to be flat. 
right? But I can't go to a bunch of flat earthers and say, I'm going to prove to you why the earth is not flat. They're never going to pay me any attention. Why? Because I'm contradicting the story that's going inside their head. Here's how I appeal to them. I say, here's why the earth is flat. Here's more evidence the earth is flat. Here's some more evidence. But it's mathematically impossible for the earth to be flat. Like mathematically, right? However, I can't appeal to that audience telling them, so they'll shut down or either get angry at me because what am I doing? I'm contradicting what they already believe. Most people are not out to learn new stuff. They're out to have somebody reinforce what they already believe inside their head, right? And I'm not talking about Grant Cardone as an exclusive to that. I'm just saying this is how marketing really works. So what you try to do is bring them in based on what they already believe, then try to introduce them to somebody new, something new. But you got to get them in first. Therefore, he's explaining to you why his marketing talked about disruption marketing. If somebody's scrolling on their uh, phone, you have to get them to stop to see what you're doing. If they don't stop, they'll never see what you're talking about. So then what do I got to do to get that person to stop while they're scrolling right on social media? Therefore, I need to come up with a way to disrupt what they already have going on. Right. And the best way for me to do that is to relay back to them what they already want to see. Right. So that's the first thing. Now, this is what I want people to understand. His core message to me is valid. And he's been promoting this message for over a decade, really probably two decades now, because Grant is like 65 years old. First message, you need to get to work. Right. That's what a lot of people really need to understand. You need to get to work. Second message is you need to focus. And those are really his two core messages. Now, there's a lot of other stuff in that universe. But normally, if you listen to Grant Cardone, his two core messages always go back to you need to get to work. You need to get off your butt and start working. And you need to focus. And you need to focus in on what you're doing to get the success you desire. And so from what I've heard from Grant Cardone is really just an extraction, right, of that core message over and over again. And many people, that's what they need to hear, in my opinion. They need to hear that if they're going to change the life of their family, they need to get to work and they need to focus. Another thing he talks about is not being satisfied. Right. So he really promotes three messages over and over again. Therefore, he does what he has to do to get your attention, to get that those three messages out to do that. You need to get to work. You need to focus and you shouldn't be satisfied with your current success. There's always another level to get to. Right. And so that's what I want people to understand is that I don't disagree with those core messages. I don't agree with everything Grant Cardone says. I'm not a big Grant Cardone fan. I'm not against him. I'm just not a fan of the guy. But I think those three core messages are valid. Right. You need to get to work. You need to focus. And you shouldn't be complacent in where you're currently at. Right. Not saying you should be a workaholic. Not saying you should be a slave to your work. What I'm saying is that many times we get complacent and don't realize that what we're settling for really is not even a lot. It's just we got uh, we have been conditioned to be complacent with a lot of stuff. So then that's as far as you're going to go, because now you're comfortable. Therefore, if you look at a guy like Grant Cardone, I talked about before, he don't have to work. The guys is 65 years old. He don't have to work, but he's an example of his message. So he's living his message. He's not telling you this. He's living it. Right. And so I think he does what he has to do to get your attention, to get in the door, to tell you that. And you just don't have to apply that to what he's talking about. You can apply that to your whole life. Right. Because Greg Cardone was one of the people that talked about. You don't need to save money. You need to make more money. Now, we're in a world where people are talking about saving. You do you need to budget and manage your money? Probably. But he'll tell you, you need to go make more money. He'll tell you there's another ten thousand dollars to five to ten thousand dollars a month. You could be making if you apply yourself. He's one of the people that talked about you need to make money because you never know when there's going to be a family emergency and you're going to need money. And then you're going to realize why you should have been spending time making money. So those are his messages, right? And so he just essentially creates a lot of different ways to repeat those same messages back to you. And I don't think those messages are negative. In fact, I think more people would benefit from understanding, right, how to apply those messages. Because if they implement this, it can be a benefit to their family, right? And so that's something that you get out of him, right, is those type of messages. So I don't. I don't see a negative in the message. Like I said, I'm not a Grant Cardone cheerleader by no stretch of the imagination, but I think his core messages are valid, right? Now, the question you want to ask is that, do you need somebody to be a celebrity for you to respect their mind? And I think often 
we don't realize in this system how much we we often need somebody to for, we need to feel like this person has to be a celebrity for me to respect what they're saying. And I think Grant Cardone realizes that about the audience, whether they're white or black. He realizes that I'm in an era where people want to feel like I have to be on a celebrity level for me to respect what this guy's saying. And if I don't feel like he's a celebrity, then I won't pay attention to it. Cause let me give you, let me hip y'all to some real life stuff. So you live in a particular state in the country, right? Unless you live overseas, right? And you may still live in the state. When you get a chance, Google the richest people in your state. And normally you'll come up with some billionaires. So Dr. Chaz, um, I know what part of the country you in, I ain't gonna put all your business in the street, but I know in the, in the state that you in, it's some billionaires in your state. So you can go Google who are the billionaires in your state. But you know what you'll find out? Nobody even knows who these people are, right? They billionaires. They got a lot of times low-key businesses, but they billionaires. I was last night looking at the richest people in the state of Tennessee. People you never heard of, they billionaires, though. Got big, big, big money. One guy is one of the biggest landowners in the whole country, right? Nobody knows who the guy is. He's one of the biggest landowners from as far as farmable land in the whole country, right? Most people won't pay attention to them. Why? Because they're not celebrities. They don't have a high profile. They're just billionaires. They got they, they papered up. they wealthy, for real. They got way more money than Grant. However, for Grant, feels like the audience that I want to go to get your attention, I got to present myself as a celebrity and put on a celebrity persona to get your attention, to get this message to you. And that's really how this society is conditioned. Many times that if we don't believe a person is a celebrity, we don't respect what they got to say. Right. So many times a person has to, I, you know, I want you to improve your credit. I got to go get luxury cars and talk about how you can get all the designer stuff just for you to go to improve your credit, even though you improving your credit is a blessing to you. That's a benefit to you. But I got to do all this extra stuff because we're in a world now where people only respect celebrity. Therefore, I don't think of a person as a celebrity. I won't listen to them. They got to say. Therefore, for me to get your attention, to get you to stop, to listen to what I got to say that I think could be a benefit to you, I got to present myself with some love. So I now I got to, you know, take pictures with other people that y'all think are celebrities, yada, 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 just to get y'all attention. Because the face value of my information is not enough for you to stop and say, well, I'm going to go implement it because he said it. Right. So that's one of the challenges that we're dealing with in this particular society. We're in a very celebrity driven culture. Right. And so I think he's trying to figure out how to market against that. So especially as an older gentleman, he got to present himself as being on a celebrity level just to get your attention, just to get you to listen to those core values he's trying to give out. And so I think that's what a lot of people want to ask themselves is that, do I need to feel like this person is a celebrity for me to respect what they're saying? Because as weird as on this YouTube, if you got a million subs, you can say five times five is 113 and, and your audience would agree with you because you got a million subs. Because in their mind, you got to be right because you got a million subs. Because in their mind, that means that you're legitimate because you got a million subs, right? So you got a, a dude that now is a, a, essentially doing stage fights and you can't tell his audience that this dude is not a real boxer. You put him in there with a real professional fighter, they'll kill this dude, Right? But because he's a celebrity, now they respect his boxing, right? But if he was just a regular dude trying to do that, nobody would pay that no attention because he's not a celebrity. So he built his celebrity up first. Then he went into these other areas because he knew that because I'm a celebrity, once I walk into these other areas, the audience is going to respect it because they respect my celebrity because we're in an era where people put a high degree of value on somebody being a celebrity. You know, that's just the era that we're in. This is just the, the actual environment that we're currently in, right? So he understands that. So something he talked about, right? Often people think they have to seem cool to talk to young people and also to talk to black people, right? Um, you get this, especially when you're an older person. So one is young people, other one is black folks. So a lot of times when you're an older person, I say old, I mean, you're north of 30. And you're trying to talk to people 25 or under. 
you often think you got to seem cool to try to talk to them. Now, I don't see this is my perspective, right? Like I said, is that this is probably why I'm not bigger than, than I'm probably not as big as I could be. I don't think not half. Of, I don't really think none of y'all is really cool to me. I'm just being real with you. I don't really see none of y'all as being cool like that. I don't care what age you are. I just don't see that, right? Therefore, I don't understand why I need to try to, okay, well, this the music that 25 and under people are listening to. That's the cool music. If I was 25 years old, I wouldn't be listening to that music. So it, it's not an age thing to me. I wouldn't listen to that music if I was 25. I'm just not going to listen to that, right? So I think because I can't really tap into that, maybe why I'm not bigger. But often once you get like north of 30, a lot of times when you try to deal with young folks, you think you got to talk like them and do what they do so they can seem like, okay, well, we got a point of reference, right? But I try to tell young people, when I was your age, I didn't do that stuff. So why am I going to do it now? It don't even, I, I wasn't doing that when I was 21, so why am I going to do that right now? That don't make no sense to me. However, a lot of people feel, so then what they do is they try to figure out, well, how are the young people talking? So we talk about, we're using street vernacular. Um, Greg Cardone ain't from the streets, man. Now, people going to say, well, you know, he admitted to being a drug abuser. Okay, cool. So he was a drug, he, he was a consumer of drugs. That don't mean you never made a move on the street except to buy drugs. We often talk about Grant Cardone's age. Grant Cardone is from Lake Charles, Louisiana, which is not a big city. Right? So the way he was moving around in whatever year he was moving around in, right? That's light years away from what's going on right now. Now, are things somewhat always going to be the same? Yes, but the language and the vernacular is not even similar. Slang change up and it's regional. It changed every like it changed like light speed. And then you also got some slang because I'm in the Southeast. I know young people that was using the same slang I was using in high school, just like uh, when Migos came out with straightening. That got to be 30 years old, right? So you do have some slang that's been around a long time ago because I didn't even know people still said that term, but they came out with a song called straightening, right? So that's what you got to understand is that this, I talk street vernacular. Well, what move you ever made in the street? And then there's levels to that because you got some people can appeal to people because um, they may have been involved in retail narcotics. But you assume that I can relate to retail narcotics. I may can't relate to retail. I may only can relate to people that did move weight. So I don't have an issue with that's his perspective of the streets. But that may be not my perspective of the streets. But often what you get with older people, not just Grant Cardone, any age. I get like over 30 and then I got to try to figure out, well, what, how the young people talking for me to be able to relate to them. Right. And it works if it works. Same thing with black folks, not just Grant Cardone, but any Anglo person. They often feel like, well, when I get around black people, I got to try to figure out how to speak to them using their language. And the thing about me is like one of my first mentors on the internet was a white dude. Um, he never tried to talk to me like that because I wouldn't have went for that. Right? His job was to teach me how to make money on the internet. He was a white dude from New York State. Went from the city, but he was from the state. He was living in Arizona. We just had regular conversation because what I was looking at was his understanding in a particular area that I thought could help my business. But me personally, I never hung around a white person that quote unquote tried to act hip or black. That just, that don't appeal to me, Right? I'm into the person. I don't care about you, me, and you listen to the same music because my musical tastes are so varied. I listen to everything on all, all over the map when it comes to music. I like all kinds of things. I'm interested. I have a very diverse palette when it comes to the arts. So I'm never stuck in one lane. So you can't appeal to me where I'm a white guy and I listen to rap. I don't care about that because I don't listen to a lot of rap. I just listen to certain stuff. But I also listen to rock and roll, I listen to, you know, soul music. I listen to jazz. I listen to electronic music. I listen to everything, right? So that's my thing is that I can't really be pigeonholed like that. So that don't necessarily work to me, but I understand why it's working for him because a lot of people are very much in a lane. And so they want you to speak to them in a lane in which they're at, right? 
So and if in his mind, if he's speaking a certain vernacular and it's helping him reach out to black folks, if it's getting their attention to get them back to those core messages, then it works because that's marketing. So I don't take no offense from it. I just think the way he's communicating, it kind of seem weird. But th I think that's just the words he used. Right. Um, and he has some Scientologists that's going to address that. And so because he's a Scientologist and they Scientologists, that's going to be an in-house situation for them. So like I said, I ain't got to get involved in that. Because one thing I know about Scientology, that there's, there's a hierarchy. And just because you make money don't necessarily mean you got rank in there. So it's some Scientologists that had an issue with that interview. They're going to deal with that. So it don't mean that I need to jump on the bandwagon because, like I said, I'm not offended. Right. I think he's trying to figure out how to speak to my audience where they're at. So I can give them this core message. And if it works to speak, quote unquote, street vernacular, even though the majority of his audience is not from the streets, the majority of Grant Cardone's audience ain't never made a move on the street. I guarantee you that. Because if you go to any city, a minority of the city has ever made a move on the street. They might be poor, but they never made a move on the street. Right? This is reality. Most people sitting in the county right now is there because they can't pay bail. They're not in there because they was making real moves on the street. That's just not how this works. It works like that in the rap world, you know, and in the end. But that's not really, you know, real, real life is not The Wire. That's The Wire or Snowflake, all these little TV shows people watch. That's just a TV show. So he understands my audience may want to feel a certain way. They may want to feel this hipness or this coolness. And I can relate to what they want to feel by talking to them a certain way. But, you know, I saw Tim Tebow do a prison ministry uh, situation one time. Tebow just went in there and gave them the word. Why? Because Tebow not from no streets. Tebow is the son of evangelists. He grew up playing sports. So Tebow did what he was supposed to do. He went in there and just gave the word. Tebow didn't go in there and try to sound cool and help because that's not who he is. Right? So Tim Tebow was doing a prison uh, ministry event and he went up in there and he just spoke the word because that's what he had to do. He's not in there to try to make them people think he's from the streets because that's false. So that's what I can relate to more is just the person just really being who they is because the way you relate to me is uh, we relate on the, the situation not you trying to make me feel like we in the same lane because we're not in the same lane. I'm from my lane, you from your lane. And we don't have to be in the same lane for us to agree on something and for us to move forward, right? So that's the thing. But like I said, that's just his marketing, right? And then we also talk about they'll feel that way if the audience is young and black. So I've seen both black and white people do this, especially on this internet, right? There's a black guy on this internet. Uh, he an older dude, he got a PhD. And they'll try to give these allegories that I know he don't know what he's talking about. But for some reason, he thinks his audience responds to that. His audience don't know nothing about that either. And I don't know why he would think his audience knows anything about that. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? So that's like the woman that game on my channel. She started talking about uh, people are relating to the PNH game because of 50 Cent and Snoop Dogg. Well, neither 50 Cent and Snoop Dogg have been PNHs. They ain't never been involved in the PNH game in their life. These are entertainers. But in her mind, that's what is representation of the PNH game. So then she's now projecting that to me. So you got to understand is that a lot of times people have a perception of something based on where they're at. And then people think, well, I got to relate to that. When I'm talking to a young black person about what I do, I rarely try to bring anything else into it except what I'm talking about. Do I sometimes use examples? Yeah, but that's not my whole uh, presentation because I want to keep it on the topic. And I don't feel like I need to relate to you on that level because I just, that's just not my thing. But everybody's different. And like I said, is it that if that's how you feel like I need to talk to people to get their attention, to bring them back to my core message, and that's what you got to do. There's different ways to market to people. And I'm going to kind of show you what I'm talking about. Right. Because it's no reason to get upset about that. So what I really believe this is, is that. Um, and so let me show you what kind of what I mean from a picture standpoint. So. That's it with Snoop. Right. So that's what I'm talking about. Often we need to feel like somebody's a celebrity for us to to pay them attention. And he understands that. So he uses that. So then if that gets your attention, so now you listen to the core message, 
then it works because he understands how the market has already been conditioned over these years. So when Grant Cardone was maybe 20 years old, it wasn't like everything was about being a celebrity. We're in an era now where everybody wants to feel like either they're a celebrity or they're close to celebrities. So if I get some celebrities to come up here, now I got your attention. Now y'all going to listen to what I got to say. So I'm not against what he's doing because he understands that's what people are going to attach to. It got nothing to do with him. It got everything to do with the market. So I think a lot of times people get mad without realizing was that that's the market. It's not him. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? I don't need Snoop Dogg for me to listen to what you got to say because Snoop don't have nothing to do. Like, so let's say I'm going to a conference and we're going to talk about uh, the derivatives market. I don't need Snoop Dogg to give no show for me to listen to, listen to that. I'm here to listen to a, a conversation about the derivatives market. But he may be appealing to an audience where the way to really get their attention, I'm going to bring Snoop in. He's going to do his thing. Now I got everybody's attention. They captivate it. Now I can get my message. Right? So what he may be trying to do is keep it, the people from feeling like this is boring. Where to me, you could just give me all the content and I'm good. But everybody's different. So you got to understand your market. So I talked about before. He understands his market. And there's nothing wrong with that. Because again, I don't believe the message he's given is negative. I believe it's a positive message. I believe you need to get to work and you need to focus and you shouldn't get complacent. Those three messages to me are powerful. Whether Grant Cardone is telling it to you or somebody else, right? So that's what I want people to really understand is that we need to look at ourselves and ask ourselves, what does a person have to do to get our attention to keep our attention? Because once they figure that out, then that's what they're going to do then you can't get mad if they doing it, if that's what it takes to get your attention. Because how come a person just can't come to you and just give you the information and you take the information and apply it? Why? How come I got to put celebrities and all this stuff into it just to get you to pay attention to what I got going on? And so, like I said before, is that it's not an indictment, a grant. The market needs to look at themselves, right? So let me give another example. Y'all remember this guy? Y'all remember Eminem? Well, how do they make Eminem seem legitimate? They surrounded him with some black folks. So now we got a white rapper. He can really rap for real. But how do we make the audience feel like he's legitimate? We surround him with some more black people. So now they feel like, well, okay, he got to be legitimate because he's he run with a bunch of black folks. But he was a better rapper than everybody in this picture. Right? But they felt like the audience wouldn't accept him if he not already with a bunch of black folks. Right. So I want people to understand is that this got nothing to do with the person that got everything to do with the market. And what do we have to do to get the market to accept what we doing the situation? Right. So knew it, man, we're going to go ahead and we're going to peace out to you, bro, because we talked about this is not a bashing video, but y'all going to get y'all three seconds of attention. So to me, this is really based on what I call the EYL effect. Right. Right. And so what I'm calling the EYL effect. Now, what do I mean by that? EYL showed, right, that there is a big market for financial literacy and financial topics for what we call, what they're going to call the urban audience, but really it's black folks. And to me, they really proved the validity of that market. Not only when you can sell them products, you also can bring them to events. And they've proven that this is a very valid market. There's a lot of what we call as marketers commercial intent. Right. And once you determine that there's commercial intent for a market, then what you can do now is expand that market. So give an example. Rush Limbaugh showed that there was commercial intent for a conservative message to a specific market. Once he developed that commercial intent, then everybody else ran into that same market to benefit from it. EYL over the past three to four years have shown that there very much is a market for black people, but especially younger black people to have them talk about topics of finance to have them talk about saving, investing, open businesses, yada, yada, yada. And not only can we sell them products, but we also can do live events. So Invest Fest is a big event. These guys have been all over the country. They also own the other, they doing international events, right? So then once EYL proves that this is a valid market, you're going to get other people to come into that market because the market is proved to have what we call commercial intent. The market wants to be served now. So you got to give EYL the credit for what they did, right? Because what they did was create a platform and you don't have a lot of the negativity that we saw on a lot of other black YouTube platforms. 
and they washed out a lot of other black YouTube play like a lot of when EYL started getting big you had other black YouTubers that was way bigger than them they ran straight by those dudes and none of the negativity do they have on their platform did those other black people have on their platform they don't have nothing they don't allow that on their platform so they showed that there was an actual market for black folks especially younger black people to talk about finance investing opening businesses yada 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 not only can we sell them products, we can do live events, right? And then they also go into other topics of mental health, things of that nature. And there's no negativity on their platform at all. And most people on YouTube can't figure out how to get their YouTube game off without being negative. They don't do none of that. So Grant Cardone being a very astute business person, he realized that there's a market here. Now he goes in with his own style because he don't move like EYL. If you look at EYL, they don't do nothing flashy. They real laid back, they're real low key. So we're going to go into another part of marketing that a lot of people don't understand. Marketing is about differentiation. Grant Cardone understands that I don't want to be just like EYL. I got to be different. So he comes in with a different aspect. That makes sense because marketing is about differentiation. You should be different. right? In marketing, you don't want to be the same as everybody else. That's where a lot of these dudes mess up on YouTube. They see one person is moving with a certain message. They try to do the exact same thing that person is doing. That's not good marketing. You should want to be different because marketing is about differentiation. Because let me explain something to you. People want to do business with somebody that's different because they don't like the first person. You're going to have people that are not going to do business with EIL because they're not flashy enough. But they'll do business with Grant Cardone. Right? You have people that won't do business with Grant Cardone because they don't like the fact that he's too flashy but they'll do business with EYL. So it benefits both situations. Therefore, in marketing, you want to be different. You just want to really have it be true to yourself, but you do want to be different, right? You don't just want to just do what everybody else is doing because that's what's working for them. Because often what it does is it doesn't work for you because why? There's no difference between you and the other person, right? So to me, EYL showed that there's an actual legitimate market here for these type of offers, Grant Cardone's coming in that same market. There's nothing wrong with that, right? Because nobody's stopping him from doing it. So why should he not go do it? And like I said, is that uh, if his core principles that he's talking about are valid, they can be a blessing for somebody that taps into those principles and goes applies it. So people tripping on this, that, and the third, all it means is you don't do business with him. But my question is, what are you doing? See, so if all you're doing is criticizing Grant Cardone, but you're not doing anything else, you sound crazy to me. Because to me, if you really didn't like what Grant Cardone was doing, it should run you to somebody else and then you should start getting to work. But if all you're doing is criticizing Grant Cardone, but then you're not doing anything in your personal life, my question is then why do you think that's a solution to your problem? Right, so that's why I said this is not going to be an anti-Grant Cardone video because most people that's going to criticize them ain't doing nothing. They just think, well, this is a way for me to get my anger off by criticizing Grant Cardone. But see, Grant Cardone didn't cause your problem in your life. Right? So you criticizing him can't be your solution because he didn't cause the problem. Because you had those issues before you knew who Grant Cardone was. So that's what I want people to really understand is that many times we're looking at this person's marketing and we're being offended by it. But my question is, are you so offended by it that you now go do something? Because if Grant, so Grant Cardone said the other day, I was talking to somebody about this about three weeks ago. He said, man, uh, if you're making like $400,000 a year, you're broke. Well, people got offended, but see, you don't understand who he's going after. There are people in this world making 150 to 200K a year. And you know what? They stuck at that number. And Grant Cardone knows they stuck at that number. They making 150. You got markets in this country where making 150, 200K is not even a lot of money. You live on the West Coast in the Silicon Valley area. That's not even a lot of money. So Grant Cardone understands that. You got a lot of people at 150 to 200K, 250, they stuck. They can't figure out how to make more money. So he tells them, hey, man, if you're making 400K a year, you broke. You know what that's going to do? That's going to persuade them and agitate them to take action to figure out how to do better. So he understands that because he's way past that number. So that's what I want you to understand is that 
many times you say you're upset about somebody's marketing, but my question is, well, what are you doing then? I'm just on YouTube, just mad about everything. Okay, cool. Well, you'll be here next year still being mad. Right? Right? And so there's plenty of YouTube channels for you to just be mad at Grant Cardone. That's not helping your situation. It's not helping your family, right? So that's what I want you to understand is that many times because we really don't understand marketing, we don't really understand differentiation and we don't understand what a person is doing to try to separate themselves in the market. Then we're getting mad, but we're not getting so mad that we do something. We just mad all the time. And there's a lot of channels to support that type of idea. So here's the next thing we're going to talk about. We're going to get on out of here. Now, Grant Cardone often talks about that people don't like him, you know, that he is offensive. And really, he's just doing that from a differentiation standpoint. He often tries to draw a line in the sand between what he's talking about and what everybody else is talking about. There's nothing wrong with that. That's good marketing, right? That's really, that's what good marketing is, right? But here's something I want to warn people against, because let me explain something about Grant Cardone. Grant Cardone's wealthy. He's a wealthy guy. He has a lot of money. He's a wealthy person, right? Um, I nine, give you a 99% chance in my mind, I bet you a steak dinner, that he lives behind a gated environment. Like his, his house or wherever he lives is probably gated. They probably got, you probably got to go through multiple people to get into the community. When he's moving around, I would probably bet that he does have some level of security, right? So he's insulated from a lot of things in this world. Grant Cardone often talks about people not liking him. You not worrying about how people feel about you. And I agree when you're trying to build success, you can't be consumed with how other people think about it. Because often their expectations of you would determine where you go in life. But one thing I want to warn, because I think there needs to be some balance to that narrative, because that's real big on this Internet. Many of the people that are promoting that to you, they live in gated communities and they got professional security. I would not encourage anybody to say, well, the way I'm going to become successful, especially on this social media platform, is I'm going to look to purposely offend people and I'm going to try to agitate people in a negative way. Because you may not have some of those protections, it may not go the way you want it to go. But often we figure that's the quickest way for me to get success online is I'm just going to offend everybody. I'm going to be a very negative person. I'm going to talk about people like I'm crazy, yada, yada, yada. So, you know, DeSantis can do what he does because he got professional security. You can't get to him. That's the governor of the state of Florida. So it don't matter what he say, right? A lot of these people that say stuff on, they got professional security. They live behind gated situations. It don't matter what they say. Often we think this is what I got to do to blow up. And you may not have that same situation. And then you can find yourself in trouble because you still got to exist in the real world. So I, I look to differentiate myself. I look to seem different. What I don't look to do is get on here and do stuff to talk to people like I'm crazy because I don't live in a gated community and I don't have professional security. So I still got to operate in the real world. So let me give an example of what I'm talking about, right? So this guy blew up just talking to people like he was crazy, right? He just blew up talking to people like he was crazy. And it worked, got him real big. But because he really wasn't that person, the people around him was abusing him because it was just entertainment. He didn't have the ability to do that and then insulate him from the rest of the world. So he just was talking to people like he was stupid on the internet and the people around him knew that was false. So they was abusing him, but it was working for the internet. But in his real world, he was getting abused because he built up so much antagonism with everybody. He needed, he felt like he needed protection. But instead of him, instead of him having professional protection, he had a bunch of dudes that was just abusing him. But he could have just came out and just did his music and went on about his business. But see, he needed a way to get everybody's attention. So what did he do? He did it by being very over the top, being very antagonistic, talking to people like he was crazy, yada, yada, yada. And it worked. But it also put him in a bad situation. So I agree with Grant Cardone when he talks about you don't have to worry about people liking you, yada, yada, yada. But a lot of people take that too far. They get on YouTube. They talk about people. They get sued. And next thing you know, they live streaming from the Middle East, acting like they owe a vacation. But really, you over there because of your legal situation. Right. Or you do a live stream. You talk about some lady's child and she sues you. And now you got a legal situation because I'm trying to figure out any way to get big on the Internet. 
So I'm all for marketing. I'm all for differentiation. I'm a fan of it. I'm a believer in it. You got to figure out a way to separate yourself from the market. But I would always encourage people to make sure that you're kind of thinking through the long term repercussions and the consequences of what you're doing. Because like I said, Grant Cardone, when he leave his situations, he go back behind a gated situation with security. Right. He got the money to hire the best security in the world. You don't have that kind of money. So you do this, this and the third trying to blow up and don't realize you somewhere. Somebody see you and they ask you, well, you know, what's up with your yada yada? And then now you got to deal with that. That's why I don't get on this Internet, talk to people like I'm crazy because I really move around the real world. So I'm still accessible. Right. So I watch what I say and what I get into because I'm still accessible. I had a person I saw the other day. I was working out. It was like, yeah, man, I seen you. I know you from YouTube. I didn't know who that person was. Just as easy. They saw me in the gym. They could have shot me. Just that easy. So I make sure I don't build up that kind of energy around me to where people feel that way about me just because I'm trying to blow up on the Internet. So that's what I want to really repeat myself. But I'm going to really reiterate what I think his core lessons are. Right. Because I think that's what people need to focus on. Right. You need to get to work. You need to focus. and You shouldn't be complacent. And he's been saying that for years, right? Don't try to just save money. Try to figure out how to make more money. Stay focused on what you got going on and don't allow yourself to get complacent. And to me, if you operate on that, you don't never have to buy nothing from the person. So to me, if you are so mad about what he's doing, why don't you just focus on that and apply that in your life and see, can you get a benefit from it and leave everything else alone? Because really the way social media works if you're not watching Grant Cardone, you'll never know what he's doing anyway. Right? So that's what I'm saying is that this idea that we're just going to jump on YouTube and we're just going to have a bellyache confessed around what this person is doing and that's how we're going to get attention. I'm not, I'm not meet Kevin. That's what he did. And it worked for him, but I'm not meet Kevin. Right? That's why I said I'm going to let meet Kevin and Grant Cardone do their thing. But I'm not meet Kevin. So I'm not trying to figure out well, I'm going to blow up by going after this guy. And that's how I'm not because now me, Kevin, got that same problem because you know what? The same way he came in the door is the same way people figure out they're going to come in the door against him. So me, Kevin got, you know, he got traction by talking about Grant. Then he got big and people start talking about him. And now he got the same problem Grant Cardone got. You understand me? And that's what I want people to understand. I would just focus on the core message because I think the core message is valid, regardless of who tells it to you. And I don't need a guy to be doing rappers and all that to give me that core message. But I, everybody's different because I don't just listen to rap music, right? I be listening to like Japanese garden music while I be working. You know, Japanese make music for your garden. And I be listening to that because it's calm. Because when I'm working, I don't want to hear nobody talking to me because I'll start focusing on what they're saying, not the work I got to do. So often when I'm working, I don't want to hear anybody talking to me. Right? So I don't, you can't just get me with rap music. But everybody's different. Everybody don't have the same variety of musical taste that I have. So I understand for the market that Grant is going after, he appeals to them. EYL market, they appeal to them. Uh, you in the retail drug dealers, that appeals to you. You know, uh, you in the Jay-Z, that every, everything appeals to different people. So there's such a wide variety of selection. You go after what you want to go after. Some people like this dude with the colorful hair. That was their guy. That appealed to them too. So there's such a variety based on where you're currently at in the story inside your head. You got that to go after. And I don't think that's a good thing. I, I don't think that's a negative thing. I think that's a good thing.